I am putting squadron putty in the gaps at the top of the wing roots on the starboard and port sides. Use any convenient method to smooth the putty. I am using a piece of a baseball card from 1989 that has no value, as it is rather stiff and expendable. After allowing the putty to harden overnight, I am sanding the excess using sponge sanders. I started with a 200 grit sponge sander to remove a lot of the excess putty. I finished the sanding with an 800 grit sanding sponge to get as smooth a finish as possible. Since the bottom of the wings, stabilizers, and fuselage of this valve has already been painted TCP 1386 light gray N10, we need to mask those areas so we can start painting the multicolored naval scheme on the upper surfaces. I am using TCP 900 masking paper for the entire operation and using a burnisher to secure the masking onto the model. You will want to apply the masking with a tight fit to prevent any of the other colors from going under the masking. I am using a gloved hand to handle the model to prevent transferring oils to any of the surfaces. You can cut the masking paper with any convenient tool or scissors to get pieces to fit the areas that need to be masked. Note that our masking paper at 8 inches by 10 inches can even be printed on using an inkjet or laser printer if you want repetitive masks. TCP 1365 Green Black D2 is the first color to apply to the top of the wings, stabilizers, tail, 
and fuselage. Since I am not going to be using much of this color, I am using a paint cup for the spraying operation. Remember, we are painting this vowel for the carrier aircraft aboard the Soryu on December 7, 1941. Now, we need to mask the upper surface of the wings and fuselage so we can paint the next color on the top of the stabilizers and the tail. Note that I had already stuffed the cockpit area with small wads of paper to prevent spraying the interior. Cut large sections of masking paper to cover the big upper wings. I am using a burnisher to secure the masking paper onto the model. Use a burnisher throughout this process. Since the front part of the valve from the front of the cockpit to the front edge of the wing will be painted gloss black, I am cutting curved sections of masking paper, test fitting them in place before stripping the backing paper and adhering the masking to the model. Trim if necessary to get a smooth curved demarcation where the black will be. Mask the remainder of the fuselage with pieces of masking paper. Note where the IJN medium red needs to be painted towards the rear of the fuselage and carefully fit pieces onto the model to give you the pattern that is required. Try to have the starboard and the port sides to be as identical as possible.
now mask the front of the fuselage to prevent spraying the IJN medium red on that portion. This masking will be easy to remove when we are ready to spray the gloss black on this part of the model. TCP 1387 IJN medium red is now sprayed on the upper portion of the stabilizers, tail, and the small area of the fuselage. It is obvious the Japanese Navy was not concerned about camouflage at the beginning of World War II. The last masking we need to do on the VAL dive bomber is on the tail, stabilizers, and what small area is exposed on the rear of the fuselage. Cover this entire section with TCP 900 masking paper. Now remove the protective masking paper from the front section of the fuselage so we can paint gloss black on this area. Spray TCP-010 gloss black on the front section of the fuselage, turning and tilting the model as required to ensure complete coverage. If you have any questions about techniques explored in this video or general questions about this build, please post your questions in the comments section below.